the Lake Burrs podcast. We're doing kind of the best of the rest here. I'm just sort of doing it live. I just made this uh, slide sheet uh, quickly uh, to talk about the five color rules uh, restrictions being lifted and how those are going to affect the other decks. There's actually been quite a few people requesting on the channel uh, to go over the other decks, right? Like all the decks that are, are impacted by this... Um, this this change and uh, that's a lot of them uh so i can't, I can't go over all of them but i can kind of do overview scopes right and go over a few of them i think uh and as to how they'll impact we cross up uh, the real answer to your questions like you guys are very excited to see all of the changes that are happening with these decks is there's actually not a million of them there's not there's not a ton of changes there's there's some changes for sure um, but not as much as you'd expect. You still have to pay costs. You still have to um, hit certain numbers and certain colors, you know, still stick around in order. Basically, the costs keep everything a lot more honest than you'd think. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some off-color splashes now that you can do. Most notably, when you're a mono-colored or two-colored deck, you can start splashing weird stuff for your third or fourth stuff. Uh, splashing all five is still just not doable because there's just no reason to either. Um, and then, and then being a three color deck, uh, but now you can swap out what your, uh, assists are and still being the three color deck with just better assists to help you out is, is, a, is probably what the biggest change is for, uh, these, these types of decks. Um, because a lot of times the assists don't have colored costs, so they're basically just free splash. Um, anyways, we'll get, we'll get into it, right? Okay. So we're going to talk about the main big stuff, uh, but... The first thing to go over, I guess, is the other stuff. This is the this is the stuff I'm. Uh, oh, I look, I forgot one. Hold on, hold on. I can do it live. I can do it live. Oh god. Uh, card. Uh, and then I'm gonna type in Mugen because Mugen is also part of this other stuff I'm not gonna be talking about much. Um. <laughs> I guess spoilers. I've already I've already said the card that I'm not really gonna be talking very much about. Um. And, nope, copy, paste, oh, look at all this work, I'm such a good YouTuber, guys. Um, <laughs> so, here's the dealio, right, like, the, this, these decks get better, so, right, all right, I've got some examples here, I've got green aggro here, I've got Mugen here, and I've got, uh, angels and demons here. Uh, basically, if you're asking, hey, does this color splash make my tribal deck better? Uh, the answer is, yeah, it, sure it does. Uh, whatever. If it's one of those five color tribal splashes, now you get access to all your tribe. Congratulations, that's probably pretty good for you. Um, then if you're like, does it make my green aggro deck or, you know, some kind of really off meta deck better? The answer is probably. You get to, you get to put Xe in it or you get to put some of these other cards in it uh, that you wouldn't normally be able to put in. You got more ranges of, of assists that you can do. So, uh, yeah, probably is the answer there as well. Um, and then if you were to say, well, does it make my Mugen deck better now that I can basically be five colors instead of two colors? Uh, the answer is absolutely. Yeah, sure it does. Um, does it fundamentally change it to be any of these being like super, super great? And the answer is no, it doesn't really fundamentally change any of these things to be super, super great. So I'm not going over them in any detail. Um, but the more impactful ones, which are these slides here, uh, I, I will go over in detail. Uh, the first one is Esper Control. Um, this is actually kind of the most interesting one when we, we look at a po post-color restriction lift world, right? What, what do we do with this? And the answer is, um, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, I've been struggling with this myself. I, a lot of the time, I'm thinking it's pretty good to do one of these colors and just drop the other one, right, and double up on it. So, like, for example, if I was a white, if I was a blue center, uh, black assists are really good and white assists are not super great um aside from yuki yuka which is fine it is above average it's not amazing by any stretch and um and and mc lion mc lion is also fine it's it's above average it's not amazing by any stretch um so the easiest thing you can do is actually drop the white right you can just drop it i don't know why i'm playing around with the color i can just literally delete it um you can just drop the white, right? And then you get access to unknown memory and, I don't know, Summer Lives Blues or something uh, as your other piece. And you end up being a pretty good deck, but you kind of lose Mill, and Mill is kind of important to Esper Control because it just helps with its damage output. Esper Control, that's just one bad thing, is it just doesn't have great damage output, right? Um, so you've got to really be con 
you got to be conscious of your damage control at all points. Um, if you're a black center, well, I mean, again, you could also drop out the the white here and run unknown memory. If you're a white center, you probably would rather stay in all of these because there's not really a double white or a double black splash you want to be going for for this unknown memory. But then, you know, you're stuck with ultra superheroes, but you're, you're, you're old ultra superheroes, right? You don't have the ability to vanish something out now like like new ultra superheroes gets. And um, the question is, do, 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 what do you do then, right? And I think the answer, as, as un, unintentional as it is, is you just, you stay you stay this, you just stay the course because the mill is actually so important to that deck. And the fact that it's only costs like one enter is so important to that deck. I think, I think you just keep it as is. Right. So like, for example, this is the, um, this is like basically pigeons deck list. I, I, I think I made maybe one or two changes to it. Uh, but it is, it is mostly the same, if not completely the same. I think the one thing that I do going into Desona meta is probably cut these Yuki, Yuki Yukas and put, um, put Lion in there. I, as we're going into Disona meta, I think the Disona meta will end up being a little bit more aggressive, and I probably will want to go back to my three stop, which uh, was bad for the last meta. The last meta, you you wanted two one stops. That, that it, like, the data at the GP even clearly shows that you would have done better <laughs> doing a one stop, one stop, or one stop and main, ra main phase um, L-Rig, uh, main phase assist, than one stop, three stop. Um, but I think we probably go back into a world where that actually matters here uh, let me click the let me click the links to get back here um so i did that there and then um i'm struggling a little bit with miko miko control as well like what what colors do i want to end up in e even sachet to an extent here um and do i want to be you know do i want to be a a three color deck or do i want to do i want to change out out of out of the esper colors to something else and I think the answer is, you know, even even remember here a little bit, like, I, I think the answer is maybe stay the course, because the mill is actually way more important than you'd expect, and the finding a guard is also really important from the white. So this, even when it's not doing all three pieces, three three triggers, I think might be better. I think this is, this is your question that you're going to have to ask yourself, and I think both are valid choices, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, moving on to white control, which I think is probably, or white aggro, which I think is probably the next... Uh, best archetype at least in the old meta moving into this meta um we have white aggro and the answer is i think you don't do any changes right white aggro theoretically adding being able to to play some other things like red red stuff to get more aggressive or get open up more damage is better but again we come down to the fact that the both the best uh white aggro cards or white aggro decks run mill that is that is part of their damage output. They're they're also um, kind of restricting on enter for the opponent. So you, you don't you want to you want to stay with that idea of that mill being damage that also restricts enter. And I I haven't found a way to cut the mill out and have it be as good of a deck. I just haven't point blank. And we've tested this quite a bit. The other thing that you could theoretically do is I don't know take a, change your change, right. So like you've got running ultra superheroes. Why not add a red center? to uh your your lineup and then you'll be just as good and the answer to that question is there's not really very many good red assists let me go ahead and just steal a card here for a second so that you guys can see it boom so we've got x echo right x echo is is probably your best uh red assist right x echo into x crossfire and the answer to why don't you splash is you need red cards in the main deck and the red cards in the main deck promote the best ones promote a damage but also promote um promote uh giving the opponent enter right and yes you could you could put some red enter burn cards in the deck historically red enter burn has just never really been that great so outside of the pieces right the pieces and the assists are, are great to do it in red enter burn signy are or spells have been bad um so it just is kind of doesn't work so i think you leave white aggro alone i don't think you cut uh clear either why anyways because clear is this unique effect that white aggro really likes which gets rid of guards both these decks specifically which have ways to deal damage to the opponent if they don't have guards really prefer that to stay in there um moving on to red aggro i, I think you've actually got two options with red aggro with this upcoming um meta and that is um you can go to sona and then you basically you're just still red um, yes, you could, um, I've got an example here in Dexas, uh, like X aggro. I've changed out, um, to have 
uh, red be a pretty core or disona be a pretty core part of it here you can see i've added quite a bit of disona on the lower end here firecracker um musica some mill stuff here um as well as some like disona spells um and some disona pump um i think that you probably want to gear your your red decks to have a little bit more um a little bit more more ag more what do you call it um more uh, disonas in them because disona promotes damage push and this might not even be enough disonas to be completely honest with you for this deck specifically um might even want to take this out and swap swap to, to the, the black disona card that mills six um i decided not to do that because i cut death deck in this deck um so that way i could run unknown memory um and again i think unknown memory has just got this ability now where basically there's a bunch of decks that if you have a good first piece right a dream team piece that or a team piece that isn't um that isn't uh in colors could conducive aka it's ultra superhero colors or uh, uh or sorry ultra Hele super helestia saber colors it, it, the second piece that you choose it's not a dream team piece matters a lot to your deck so if you've got something here that you can do and then you can get away with a uh running unknown memory instead uh it's actually fine to do so um so this is double black for example so i i want to use unknown memory over death deck here now um i think it's cheaper i think it's better uh, I missed the mill a little bit, but that's why I added some more mill cards specifically into this deck to, to make it function. Um, anyways, my, my point is that I think uh, if you are ending up in, in any of these red-based aggro decks, you probably end up in a Disona route here. Um, if you don't, I do think actually there's a world where you say, uh, well, I'm already white and red, so adding the blue Elrig... Um, is an easy answer to do here, and then I can get myself Colorful Ensemble, and I can freeze the opponent's Elrig, I can um, basically do Super White Heaven, uh, I can I can deal 2 damage for 2 Enter, and also freeze the opponent's Elrig. I think that also ends up being a pretty cool aggro choice that you can, you can do, and I would say uh, it's definitely something to explore. Uh, if you end up in white, red, and then ha have a blue uh, assist, probably Eldora seems like a good one to add to basically any deck and and it, it's just basically free blue you know and, and get something out of it i think that's a valid solution too for these red aggro decks i think they're either going to go into either of these two things some decks are like oh, i just there's just not enough disona that i want to push into right now which is true there's just not a ton of red disona uh right now um but then we get we get to the next question which is tempo decks slightly related to these aggro decks these are these blue tempo decks so like i uh really is a good example um miluloon is another good example of a blue sort of like uh, tempo deck eldora to a to a certain extent the question is what do you do in this post color world and i think the answer is um you know you you end up having a more freer splash for red a lot of these tempo decks end up being white blue and then need some other third color but whether that third color is black whether that third color is green whether that third color is white right in order to get certain pieces that they might be looking for is really really a questionable thing and i think this is probably the most vague answer i'm going to give but having access to red without having to go into red assists could be a very good strong thing for tempo decks uh x x is is probably your best red assist in the game but not necessarily having to run X assist or X uh, assist because X echo asks for more or less 10 to 12 red cards in your decks means that you can splash stuff like firecracker. If you go the disona route or Lancelot and Ramels if you go the non disona route, just so that we can get a little extra damage push, um, much, much, much more viable. And so I think you get to see these tempo decks, which have been held back because they've been, uh, having to basically choose between, uh, red, or um white as their main color splash here suddenly able to do either both or more you know with with maybe some light green in in this side of the world right all right i'm gonna make a pyramid here um generally speaking i think you're probably gonna end up either in blue white black so you can get ultra superheroes and that, those kinds of like these kinds of tempo -y, more controlling-esque pieces and assists um or you'll end up in this sort of scenario where you end up a little bit more aggressive and the green will get you some inner charge. Um, but now, now with this, this color restriction lifted, you can kind of go 
all right, well, I, I want to be more green or more white and blue based, but I need some damage output. So that's going to be red, but I also need enter. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to look something more like this in terms of my splash. And I, and I think, you know, like these being the most important and there's being some amount of red and there being some amount of green, but the green ends up being your, um, your, 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 your assist here, or you go like double white in your assist, even like double blue seems like it could be pretty good in your assists. So I think, I think there's a world where like, that's probably the, the look of the tempo decks, you know? Um, and, and you just have main deck red. I, I think that is the, the future of it, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm theory crafting here a little bit because I haven't really found a good example to go into with the, the, these sort of like, uh, tempo decks. Uh, I didn't do any Aya because I just don't like Aya that much anymore, but I have Mila Loon. That's, that's the one that I, I updated a little bit. And you can see I'm splashing, um, I'm splashing, uh, like, Disona pretty hard in this deck. Uh, I try to keep it, uh, mostly off of what No Soup For You, um, has done. Just sort of, like, in order to, because it's a good jumping off point, right? I got four, it got fourth in the, um, third or fourth in the, um, in the GP. So, I didn't veer too crazily here, but there's some Disona upgrades, I think, that this deck could have, like, extra is pretty good, but also this to sort of, like, go through your deck, um, and then, of course, you know, Firecrackers being the main thing that you can now use, uh, Musicas, stuff like that to, to get some more damage output. So you, you can see where I'm going with this, right? I'm, in here, I'm even running Ultra Superheroes in this, because I'm just like, Ultra Superheroes is just still too valuable, even though I'm only getting two modes off of it, not three. That's the awkward thing about blue centers right now, is just there's not really any great Dream Team pieces to use with it. Um, so... Yeah, I, I, that's that's the example there. I don't really have any other tempo decks worth mentioning in in in, in the the future updates that I've I've put out. Again, if you want to find these um, decks at all, you can always just go to my links down in the description, which has all my deck lists in them. Uh, moving on, um, Atomic. Okay, cool. So this is a pretty easy sh shift out. Here's the funny thing about it, Atomic decks. Um, they were running white uh, as an Esper deck specifically, so they could get. Uh, Exia, yeah, but really secretly they were trying to get Yuki in the deck. Um, the deck doesn't exactly fold to remember uh, the uh, Elrig or the um, the 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 Signy, but it is a very big uphill battle. Like putting out two uh, remember Signies against uh, Atomic can just basically break the game super wide open in your favor. So it had to splash white but none of the card like white just doesn't have really good mid-range assists like it's got akino it's got Ange. both of them are above average but not excellent right like if if Ange actually brought back any signy yeah sure we'd use it but it, it's 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 not super great here um so i think we're happy to uh cut white out of the deck completely basically um unless you're being near unless you're playing like remember uh remember Adams, in which case uh, you still got white in the deck, but I think remember Adams gets worse, uh, with this update. And then, um, Deus, Deus Adams gets better. I'm just trying to find the deck here real quick. Why I'm just like not seeing it here. Um, so you can see that I, I basically completely cut out, um, the, the white, uh, I've got more white in here, but, <laughs> but I have, um, specifically, uh, we're back to, we're back to blue, double blue assists here. Or sorry, blue assist and and double black, you know, uh, being the colors of choice here. My reasoning being is again, I, I still want these Exias. You see, I've got one, um, I've got one Yuki here, but I've also got two Palebees, which are basically Yuki at home. They're just not quite as good, but they have a life burst, um, and I want. I just needed to to fix my life burst count. That's another thing. Atoms don't really have a ton of good life burst signy. I mean, they have GA. But I'm actually a pretty big hater of GA, despite me living in Georgia. Um, I I don't think it's actually that great. It's really good against uh, control matchups and terrible, terrible, terrible against aggro. We're going into a mid range uh, aggro world right now uh, with Disona, so I think I'm I'm not into that fact. Uh, I'm running Death Deck and uh, Unknown Memory. Unknown Memory basically does a really good job pretending to be um, Xeno Cluster. And I think the deck really did like Xeno Cluster. It also ran Garden of Singularity, which is less good moving into red aggro than it was in moving in when we were in a more white aggro meta. 
Um, so I put in Death Deck there instead because Death Deck feels like it just does more more things. It's got the mill, and I, again, I really want that mill in my decks. Um, as you can see here, I've got I've got a fair amount of mill in the deck. Um, what's funny is this is actually an atom, so, <laughs> so it's a straight up upgrade to the deck. Is just having access to another atom at level white level one that is black is is actually just generally a straight up an upgrade for this deck. Um, so yeah, I, I think this deck has still got legs and I think it's still definitely very good. I just think, I think the five color, uh, rule split hasn't been, has been kind to it, but not super, super kind. Um, okay. So we're going into the next one. This is kind of a new archetype I've been talking about a little bit and been testing with. I, I haven't done a ton of disown a meta testing because I'm having fun right now doing the post color restriction rules. And then I'll do, look, we'll, we're, we've got plenty of time. We've got years of Dissona in front of me, probably. So I wanted to get as much fun as I can in with this color restrictions lifted without the Dissona creeping in for now. And um, I think um, I think this archetype is, is fantastic. Uh, so uh, I actually think maybe this archetype is probably the best archetype moving into Dissona. After Dissona, it's probably not the best archetype anymore. But it, gee, woo. Ooh, Ultra Superheroes does a lot of work in this post color restriction world. Like all the other, all these other color um, pieces got better, right? Like we were talking about, um, what was it? Where is it over here? Over here, Colorful Ensemble also got better, but oh goodness gracious, does does um, <laughs> does Super Ultra Superheroes does really well? And I think generally speaking, you're probably in these three colors. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be. Remember, it can also be uh, Ange. I am kind of dead set on, on Remember being better than Ange in this archetype, but I, hey, look, if you want more damage output, Ange is perfectly fine. I really value Remember's ability in these colors specifically to find guards, damage, recursion, utility, you name it, because this archetype existed in the previous meta. It just wasn't very good, and, and it's one claim to fame is it can kill aggro decks very easily. Um, because it had the ability to just constantly cycle through its deck and find damage output and not be discarded out, right? So it was just really resilient in that front. Um, it existed in the previous meta. Now that, that Ultra Superheroes gives it an incredibly valid reason to exist, um, it's it's just it's really fantastic. Uh, you'll notice I made the sad face in um, in in uh with with <laughs> blue because in so, a lot of ways you can drop blue completely from this archetype or you don't need to if you don't want to either um i personally didn't pigeon i know did drop it for a little while i don't know if he's running it again um i like the blue in there but it's not it's not it's not a main deck blue thing at all so let me show you what i've been i've been cooking with um and i've actually been incredibly happy with this this completely like this um as as i'm gonna be honest with you, this deck feels uh, oppressive to play uh not only am i able to now actually play this game where i can enter starve my opponent in certain scenarios where i'm just freezing with uh remember and then uh any any like i'm trashing things with gay bog now uh, i can play that stuff but i've got enter burn in the main deck and this can can really interrupt some key pivotal moments for me to push safe damage in that i wouldn't normally be able to um, and then the deck is just littered with more damage output, right? Like just, just, just these Ramels and these Lancelots make a hell of a difference on the lower end, just to getting in more safe damage earlier so that my late game is, is just easier with like a bigger window to end the opponent in. Um, there's still a fair amount of discard here with follow lose and random drains. I think this is the most good stuff pile deck I've ever made <laughs> in Wee Cross, and it, it functions, it functions. Um, these Andromedas are my least favorite part of the deck, but hey, they do a job with Remember and the Enter Burn up here as well as the Freezing up here to just kind of interrupt flow. It's not really going to get them down to zero Enter at any point, but it, all of this stuff interrupts flow. Discard interrupts flow, the Enter Burn interrupts flow, drawing the extra cards to help me gain my flow back, Exia's Remembers sort of to just mess around and interrupt flows a little bit. Uh, Gay Bog's actually part of that process too. Um, this deck really is what messes up with the opponent's flow a lot, and I, I kind of love it. I, I really do. Plus, uh, X Crossfire actually has uh, targets nowadays because post five color restriction rules, people are playing more greedy mana, greedy mana bases, greedy enter bases now, and you can actually hit more with it. Whereas when I tested this with the um, basically the white aggro uh, meta we were in just just a second ago, um, it was way worse because you just didn't have a lot of hits with it. Um, 
overall, yeah, this is where I think where you want to be at with this like hero's mid range. I know that's just sort of a name I've come up with, um, but it needs something to just describe it and differentiate itself from Esper control. And a lot of people hate the magic terminology for Esper, so I'm trying something different here. All right, I'm trying not to to use the magic term. <laughs> Support me in the comments. <laughs> um, my next one that I want to talk about is Echo mid range. So uh, this is one of those decks where I literally I don't have a deck to show you. But I'm just theory crafting here. I this is excellent. I I there is definitely something here, and someone should brew something with it because it is probably a top a top level threat in my opinion. Just just looking at this alone, right? Let's say you were a green center and you're running these two colors with these two pieces. Um, that's ridiculous. If you drop the blue and instead you're running these two two colors with a blue center, also ridiculous. If you're running these two colors with a red center, also ridiculous. Um, not an aggro deck necessarily. This has to be sort of more of a mid-range thing. But but this actually solves one of the problems with um with decks. Uh, one of the reasons why Esper Control was so dominant for so long is because when you played Esper Control, you had your best you had your best piece ever, right? So I guess let's just go into uh, my decks and we'll just grab the Madoka deck. Um, okay, you you played Ultra Superheroes, which was the best card that you possibly could, along with some of your best uh, assists that you possibly could. Most mostly, notably Machina, and then you know some other kind of piece, some other kind of assist. Generally speaking, Madoka. If we're doing the White Center Esper, um, so you got to play with the best Elric deck possible, and that was also because specifically Super Holestia Saber is the best not Dream Team piece in the game kind of um that was because you had the you had access to the best dream team piece and you had access to the best uh the d best non-dream team piece these together put work in and that is to say that there really wasn't any other deck that had that claim to fame this has that claim to fame ancient echo and De diva deathbeam are fantastic pieces and it's very rare that you end up with a piece that is quite on par with uh, Super Celestia Saber, um, which this piece very much is, bind you, and it's not a Dream Team piece. So right now you're in this, and this, and 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 Ultra Unknown Memory helps double double color decks. But that being said, outside of like uh, maybe Dance in the Lance, Red Zone, and um, and Summer Lives Blues, there's not really any double color pieces that you want to be playing. So the unknown memory, right, needs to have some kind of specific team piece or or um, dream team piece. Uh, in the future, we'll see more of those dream team pieces that are specific to certain deck archetypes. But right now, um, that's, that's what unknown memory would pair well with. That's what you'd use. This is one of those times where you actually get the ability to play a fantastic dream team piece with a fantastic secondary piece. And all of your assist choices in these colors that you can pair them with are also excellent. So um, you end up in a scenario where you have a incredibly solid L rig deck, and it can carry a maybe less solid um, main deck uh, because you've got I don't know, green or, or red in it, and these aren't necessarily the most solid uh, colors. But red's got a lot of, to give for it. Blue has a, sh a ton uh, to give, and green has a couple standout cards as well. So basically, I think this kind of mid-range deck where you're ignoring you're you're really like just shouldering your through way through with damage you're drawing extra cards you're enter burning a little bit you're you're um making your signy big so they can't be vanished so easily you have some interaction here with your l rig deck um this type of of deck is fantastic and it's just sort of waiting for someone to break it right now this would be my most thing that i'm, I'm interested in breaking even something that like i've been interested in with miko miko um, to do because Miko Miko is a center and then use these two pieces um, could be excellent. Um, the next deck archetype to talk about here is green resources. Um, so green resources, I used to call it green attrition. I think green resources is just sort of a better term for it in general. Um, let's steal that or from here to make this look better. Um, green resources uh, has a question for you and it's basically like uh, I don't really know what to do here it's like it, it really hasn't give, been given 
so much support. So you can go with Colorful Wish, uh, where the awkward thing is it's a Dream Team piece, and you can prefer it not to be a Dream Team piece, basically. And you can get yourself guards and, and other cards, you know, and also open a lane, and that's that's nice. Uh, or you can go with Lancer in the Dark, and you can go with more of a Disona uh, archetype. Either way, you still end up pretty much in this green-black space, and adding, uh, like, red or, or white doesn't necessarily make it a better deck. You can focus more in green and black now and still have Exias in the deck, you know, and you'd still be pretty good. Um, and, like, that's sort of where, like, my Mel of yesteryear lived, um, as well as my Mel of, of, I guess, this year, too. But if you guys want to see more of that Mel deck, you can always just go to the video that I just recently put out. Um, so, Mel, right. Uh, Mel ended up being this sort of rock archetype to um, this this sort of, like, resource... It, it doesn't really matter if the opponent is, uh, why well, I call it resources, it doesn't matter if the opponent is enter burning them, enter starving them, or trying to discard their hand down. Basically, green provides tools here to just ignore that and keep playing the game long term, uh, which is not something that uh, the other colors provide as easily. That is one of basically green's only claim to fame. So both of these provide that. Um, you can either go into a black, white, you know, thing here and you can get yourself into a colorful wish territory which is which is nice or you can go with a uh, disona options here and you'll end up just more good stuff mid-range but you can get access to better damage output some enter as well as being able to be uh, immune to mill damage i don't know which is which is the better choice here for for green uh these green resource decks but i think uh any of the options there are valid uh lastly we're talking about black mill here um Adofu is the, the easy one uh, to talk about. And I don't think anything changes here. Uh, you, you, color restrictions aside, you are still playing multiple black L rigs, basically, just to get achieve the L rig mill um, setup. So I don't think anything really has changed here. I think that's pretty much everything being the same. Um, jumping back into my decks and seeing if there's anything interesting I want to point out as changes that I've made to uh, the decks. Um, not really in Sachet, I added some of this Yuka Yuka, because Yuka Yuka can get you back guards for the cost of Enter, and I, I don't know if that's a great cost, but the deck needed some level 2s with like 8,000 power, so I thought it was a fine thing to do, have in the deck and not necessarily use if you don't need to. Um, Tomo Agros did the same, you saw how I changed uh, Remember Control, and in a post Disona world, I think I'd leave it the same too. I actually think this is still very, very, very strong, even in the Disona meta, um, and I would continue to use it. Uh, Virtuals, I changed slightly to have the Eldora um, assist. Um, this is what's popular in Japan, and I can believe it. Uh, Eldora gives you Enter while also being able to give you... Um, specifically allows you to hit your life cloth more often like double down on it um i removed the other piece which was lazulite flash uh to bring in moon knight which is the mill uh piece and i think um i think i think you want to mill with this deck now i've been sort of persuaded to do that by um by starfruit um and then outside of that, yeah, you're still running some some non-virtuals here, uh, like uh, you know, remember and and uh, Exia, because they hit well with the um, with the Eldora double doubling your uh, life bursts, uh, and I think by doubling your life bursts, you also can use you just want to up the amount of good life bursts in your deck, and I think these are all really solid life bursts to have in the deck, um, so yeah. I guess that's that's the virtual deck. It hasn't changed very much, uh, but I guess it's it's changed a core component of it. So I probably shouldn't say it hasn't changed very much. Dashirana, I made um, I made I made with with uh, what do you call it? Uh, with Disona in it. There's no reason not to. Uh, the deck wants to open up lanes and draw draw cards. Uh, it was already drawing most of its cards from life bursts and um, like other things. I also swapped out Eldora. Um, I swapped out uh, Miko Miko Assist for Eldora. I think it's just generally, generically a better card to to use in this is the the uh, this assist line because it just gives you more more options. And I think this deck is the deck goes so quick that just hitting those life bursts very quickly early on will do. And it really it has no defense. 
right? So because it has no defense, you you will be hitting life burst with it, which is great. I, I think that's the way the place I'd go with Dash Hirana. I probably would want to have more Eldora assists, and I'd want to go a little partially into these um, Disona, uh, just to give myself more options. Um, and more, just a little bit more power, because I think the deck needs a little bit more power in order to stay relevant. Um, then, let's see, is there any other deck that I updated here? Not really. I, I haven't really updated any of the other decks here, because I just don't think that they're super worth updating, uh, at least yet. But I do, I am, I am very interested in trying to figure out a way to break Echo Midrange at some point. I just, I just haven't had time to do it yet. But that's something I would look into as well.